You wanted to know which planet was causing your suffering? Hmm. How about Earth? Hey everyone, Brian Blake here, back with another Atom Return video. For today's video, we're going to be covering the photographer of the island, Martina. I went ahead and reached out to my friend Dexy Lexi, who is currently the number 2 Martina in the world and number 1 Martina in NA, to explain to me how to best approach playing this character. Lexi does stream pretty consistently on Twitch, and she is pretty active in the character hub if you want to ask her questions directly there as well. So the build for Martina actually matters a lot more than most other characters, just because Martina does function a bit differently. Not only are you trying to get your build online, you also want to situate yourself properly to get your broadcast stacks as quick as possible. Making sure you make it to broadcast mode is probably the most important thing you have to learn on Martina before you can really get to her main gameplay. So with all that said, let's go ahead and talk about her build, route, augments, and tactical skill. Lexi recommended two builds for me, one of them being a build that focuses more on CDR so that you can get your stacks more quickly, and another build that has a higher focus in combat stats in case you want to fight early on. Lexi notes that if you come across a enemy corpse, you're going to want to both record it to get that extra broadcast stack, but also go ahead and check it to see if it has any cooldown pieces. Cooldown is going to be your most important stat early on because it means you can get your ultimate up more often, which means you can hit your broadcast cap more often as well. Because of the very generous attack speed to attack power conversion on Martina's passive, Lexi favors going for upgrades that include both attack power and attack speed. Since she prefers playing an auto-attack style over the casting style that other Martinas enjoy, she does end up building Radar and Alexander to ensure that she has a good amount of crit for the late game. If you do want to play a casting style, you can always go for flat AP chests such as Shooting Star and Omerta, Laurel Wreath for the headpiece, or Chain of Thorns for the arm piece. Martina does have two distinct ways to play her, so don't feel trapped into one style or another, just play the one that you think fits your style the best. For augments, healing power seems to be the main augment that all Martinas take, along with either Thea or Penny Pincher for preference, and then assembly in order to proc your healing power on top of your ultimate when you cast it. You're gonna always take the red subtree for stopping power and dismantle Goliath to maximize your damage output since you are a pretty squishy ranged character. For your tactical skill, you're pretty much always going to choose Blink, just because it offers so much for you when it comes to escaping, engaging, or repositioning in the middle of a fight. She does mention that Soul Stealer can be an alternative tactical skill if you want to use it, but since I don't see Lexi or the other Korean Martina using it, I personally would not recommend going Soul Stealer over Blink. So to loop back to what I was talking about before the previous section, Martina's routing is going to be mostly focused on getting your broadcast stacks as soon as possible, as opposed to finishing your build on time. Obviously, you still want your build to be done at some point, but if you see a fight happening and you're about level 6, you want to run there and get your camera out in order to get your broadcast stacks early on. Your best friends are ironically going to be griefers that are around the same zone as you because they're probably going to be hitting somebody else, which means that there'll be plus 2 stacks for you very early. Another trick that Lexi uses to farm her broadcast stacks quickly is something that might be considered a bit griefing if you were any other character, but that is to actually go ahead and die to the person you just farmed a broadcast stack off of so that you can teleport to another zone that has people. This very creatively abuses a mechanic that Nimble Neuron added with the 1.0 update where you can actually see how many people are in each zone when you go to respawn. This way you can actually actively go to people instead of having to run away from them, and you're using Nimble Neuron's legally mandated map hacks in order to farm your stacks more quickly. Pretty good stuff. Stream, beach, forest, and any zones with bears are usually going to be very contested, which means that you should be safe to go there in general if you aren't dead or respawning. And obviously you want to be anywhere where an objective has spawned, because either you're getting that objective for free, or there'll be people to farm broadcast stocks off of. So how are you going to play Martina once you have your broadcast form up? Lexi recommends playing a front-to-back style. The reason for that is because Martina has inbuilt defense shred on her ultimate, meaning that if you focus down the front line with a fellow squad mate, you can melt them pretty quickly, especially with Martina's insane auto attack damage. If there are walls around you that can safely hop with your E, you can dive the back line pretty easily, just be safe because you are a very squishy character, and you don't want to overextend by accident with your E even if you can jump back to a safe zone. Again, Martina's auto attack damage is very ridiculous, so you can actually kill tanks a lot faster than most AD carries can, especially when you have your ultimate defense shred on top of them already. Your main goal in every fight is going to be to kite, and Martina's kit is pretty well equipped to do that. Your cameras from your W do provide a very strong route when you're in broadcast form, and you can even set them up in key locations before fights break out so that you can easily kite around them and make sure that your enemies' lives are as annoying as possible. Martina's E is probably her most complex ability and will take some getting used to. 
When you use it, you're going to dash forward and you have a little radius around you that you cannot walk out of. If you do walk out of it, you're forced to dash backwards and you'll stun anybody that's in your way if you are in broadcast form and it will heal you for the damage you dealt while you were using E. If you do hit people on the way back, you can actually combo them into a nice little root with your W and Q since they'll still be stunned from the initial E pullback. Another trick you can use with the E is that you can actually break the tether forcibly with hyperloops, meaning that if you're being chased, you can actually E towards the hyperloop and teleport out, which may confuse your opponents because they'll be expecting you to teleport back and you're already long gone. Your E is also one of the best mobility tools when it comes to poking because it allows you to go up safely and auto attack somebody that's in range and then also jump back if you choose to. Keep in mind that your E is actually a CC immune tool, so if you're going to get crowd controlled by something like, say, Vanya Sleep, you can completely immune that effect by dashing back as it pops. It's a pretty important thing to get used to because there are so many crowd control effects in the game that will screw you over if you don't play around it properly. So unfortunately, you will have to understand how a lot of characters play in order to appropriately use Martina's E to its best ability. Just again, I want to emphasize the fact that you are playing a very squishy character. Any character who is able to run Dismantle Goliath is going to be made of paper, so if you misposition yourself, you will find yourself on the ground very quickly. Martina's best teammates are going to be characters that benefit greatly from her AoE defense shred, which would include burst mages and burst auto attack characters like Hayes, Tia, Bernice, and Bianca, or characters with a lot of lockdowns so that you can combo your ultimate and shred people down very quickly. Estelle is going to be your best teammate because she allows you to play very greedy, play very aggressive, and also can keep you very healthy with her ultimate and E AoE damage reduction. The characters you're going to struggle the most into are going to be assassins or heavy CC compositions. Lexi specifically notes that Tazia, Dylan, Kathy, and Eleven are very hard to play into because you have to be aware of them at all times, probably because they do a lot of damage and they can also catch you out very easily if you take your eyes off of them. Daniel is another character that could be a huge problem, but if you have cameras to spot him, you should be able to deal with him. Just be hyper aware of where this character is at all times because if you give him the space, he will one-tap you instantly. So that's all from Lexi's side, again her Twitch and socials will be here and in the description below, as well as my pinned comment. Please go watch her if you want to have Martina explain in greater detail, she probably has a lot more tech and ideas that I could not capture in a short Google Doc. And so now this is the part of the video where I slide in my own opinion about Martina. Martina is a pretty interesting character because I think she seems weak if you don't get her to broadcast, so I do think the perception of her is a bit more poor than what it should be. Obviously, you do have to be a very specific mindset and player to get to your broadcast stacks quickly, but once you're there, you'll definitely feel super powerful. I don't know if you guys have been hit by Martina auto attacks when they're in broadcast and also have good items, but it really hurts a lot. It makes pre-nerf heart seem like a joke in comparison. Obviously, she trades off that damage for some pretty clear weaknesses, like her emphasis on positioning, but I think that's a fair trade-off that Nimble Neuron has created for Martina. Not every character has to not only work for items, but also play a very fun minigame to get to a point of power that they feel very destructive in. I'm sure I mentioned this already, but Martina is a character that I think is grossly misunderstood by the majority of players. A lot of people don't really focus on getting their broadcast stacks as soon as possible, and the fact that Lexi has found a way to really creatively circumvent that issue is really impressive. Hopefully you guys are inspired to try out Martina after watching this video, and if you were already inspired to play Martina at some point before, let me know if this video was educational. This is a total tangent, but Martina was the character that kind of broke my spirit last year, and seeing her in such a good spot now makes me very excited to try her out in the future. My entire issue with her before was that she didn't feel like a real character early on, but the fact the game is now squads only definitely fixes all the issues I had before, because when you played solos before, you really just had to find one person to stalk and, you know, like, ult them over and over again, but now since it's squads, there's actually a lot of action that you can experience as Martina, even though you are kind of this insect flying around most of these places. It's pretty entertaining to watch streams and try it out yourself, just like trying to figure out if you can guess where people are fighting and guess where people are congregating. It's honestly a really fun minigame, and I recommend everyone try it out at least once. But yeah, that'll be all for me for this video. Please let me know if you guys enjoyed this content. I'll probably be trying to do Jackie next. I'm um, not sure if I'll make it in time for when I go on vacation later this week. I should probably really mention this in a community post to gauge interest, but I will probably be uploading a bunch of community tournament casts from Kluzma's tournament that happened over this weekend as a filler for when I'm gone. So if you guys just see a bunch of videos that aren't really that great quality, like just me casting over a replay for 20 minutes, and that's what that is, sorry in advance, but I do want to try and keep the channel active while I'm gone, so I hope you guys don't mind. Anyways, thank you again for watching the video, and I hope you have a great day or night wherever you are, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye bye